What do you need to do in the morning to have an interesting and productive day? There are two very important hours during the day that are going to shape the rest of the time you spend. And these are the hour just before you go to sleep at night and the hour just after you wake up in the morning. In this video, I'm gonna give you my best tips for an ideal morning. If you follow them, I'm sure you are going to be more efficient, more productive and enjoy your day more in general. Hi, I'm Eva. I usually share content about personal growth, but in French. This is my first video in English because I've made a video about learning languages and after posting it had the idea of making this video in English to make you practice. The first point of this video is to understand the importance of routines. I'm all for spontaneity but routines are very important because thanks to them you don't ask yourself if you want to do the task or not. You know sometimes you're a bit lazy, you're a bit tired and you don't want to do something that you know will make you feel better. Go for walk, do a workout at home, prepare a nice dish. Well, once this action is part of a routine, you're not going to ask yourself, oh, do I want to do it? Do I not want to do it? Because we know the answer to that question. The answer is usually, no, never mind, I'll do it another day. But once it's settled in a routine, once you are used to doing it and your brain knows that, for example, before going to bed, you have to brush your teeth, it knows it. So it takes less effort to actually do the action. It's easy to get it done because you don't think about doing it, you just do it. This is why if you want to go to sleep earlier than usual and you want to create this habit of getting to bed before midnight, for example, then it's going to be harder the first few days. But once it's settled, once you are used to going to bed before midnight, it's going to require less energy from you to get it done. The second thing is to have a consistent alarm routine. I'll tell you mine, for example, if you need inspiration. I put my phone, ideally, I think it would be better to have an alarm clock that is just specialized for alarms and which is not a phone but I still haven't taken care of buying one. So for now I use my phone. I set the alarm, I put it in plain mode. Personally I don't want my phone to be next to my head at night even more if it's not off and it can receive messages and phone calls and stuff like that. And I put it far away from my bed which means that I need to get up to actually turn it off. But that's not sufficient for me because I know that some days when I'm very tired, I just turn it off and go back to bed. So additionally, I put my little switch, the little remote for my shutters next to it, which means that I need to press the remote to open my shutters and open my windows before turning my alarm off. This is like a little rule that I gave myself. The hydration is also an excellent tip because it can help you to feel more awake. When you put water in your body in the morning, then instantly it helps you wake up more easily. Your body did not get one drop of water for the past eight hours so it desperately needs hydration. Third point, if it's very hard, like too hard to wake up in the morning for you, maybe it's because you need more sleep. Because the morning routine doesn't start in the morning, it actually starts the night before. If you go to bed at 2 a.m. then you're gonna be way too tired to wake up at 8 the day after. Our bodies are machines in a way and they have certain requirements to function properly and one of the best best advice I've read a long time ago was to focus on the time you go to sleep rather than focus on the time you wake up in the morning. This way you get your eight hours of sleep and it will be way easier to wake up the day after. Before I always had around seven hours of sleep, 7.30. And it was okay, but I realized that once I started to wake up later to sleep more, around 8.30 or 9 hours per night, I know it can sound a lot for many people, but I realized that I was way more efficient, I was feeling more like myself, I was deeply energized way more and I was doing way more stuff during the day than when I was sleeping seven hours. This one and a half hour more was making a huge difference in my day. It's more time sleeping obviously so you could think that it's less productive, that it's time doing nothing, that you lose time but I think it's so worth it when I compare everything that I do during the day and how I feel. Fourth point is to make your bed in the morning. It's a classic, it's a bit cliche. How However, it really works. It's very important for me, at least, to start the day with an action that is simple and that is easy to succeed, but that gives little gratification and satisfaction. What I do to air my bed 
is to put the blanket at the bottom of my bed. I open the windows for like 10 minutes. You can do that while you make your breakfast, for example, or while you do your five Tibetan rites. I'll put the link here because it's one of my favorite videos ever on YouTube. And then after the 10 minutes, I make my bed. I know if I keep my bed open with the pillows everywhere, etc., during the day, then there is a big chance that after lunch, for example, I'm gonna see my bed and be like, okay, let's go in bed and scroll on my phone for like five minutes. But we know that it's never gonna last five minutes. But if my bed is all clean and tidy, I'm not gonna want to sit on it to work, for example. I will rather work at my desk. And usually I know I'm more efficient when I work at my desk rather than in my bed. Fifth point, which is one of the most important for me, it literally changed my life because the way we spend our days is the way we spend our lives, is no screen time for the first hour of the day. If you absolutely need your phone to check if you didn't receive any important emails or any important messages, okay, do so. But at least no social media for one hour. And if you can, no phone at all for the first hour of the day. Our bodies are going to crave what we gave them in the morning. Our first actions of the day are going to shape the rest of our day. Our body is going to crave that action or these action for the rest of the day. So if it's scrolling in your bed, our brains for the rest of the day will want quick and easy dopamine. But if we wake up and do a simple task like make our bed, it's gonna be way easier for our brain to understand that we did a small action that gave us satisfaction and the rest of the day our brain will crave to do actions like that that are going to reward us but after not instant gratification like social media. I try to be very careful and very mindful about these first 60 to 90 minutes in the morning. Usually since I put my airplane mode during the night I just don't turn it off for the first one hour and even if I see the messages a bit later then it's fine like it won't change anything and it helps me to not see my notifications because I know that if I turn my airplane mode off and I see all the notifications coming then I will want to just have a quick look and see my emails and see my messages and quickly reply and the beginning of my day will be a bit of a rush and it won't be the nice calming peaceful first hour that I need to feel more energized for the rest of my day. Six, plan your day the night before. I know some people love to do the journaling and the to-do list in the morning and that's okay if it works for you but I noticed that I'm way more efficient if I plan my day the night before when I'm in my bed and I'm journaling about you know why I'm grateful for my day and stuff like that then I will also plan the few actions that I absolutely want to do the day after to feel satisfied with my day because this way once I go to bed and you know when you're like trying to sleep you have different thoughts in your head and if if I've planned what I want to do the day after, then I can start to visualize how I'm going to do it and start to have ideas on, for example, videos, if I want to film a video or write a script. And before the day even started, I already have a good vision of how I'm going to do the tasks that I want to do. Whereas if I do it in the morning, I feel like the day has already started and I don't know how I'm going to fit all the actions that I want to do during the day. Small tip as well is to not overcharge your to-do list because it just feels like too much to do and I know if I feel like that, I don't want to do any of it. I'd rather have like five actions in my list, highlight the one or two that I absolutely need to do if I want to feel satisfied with my day rather than having a list of like 15 or 20 tasks. That is just stressful to me. See how it works for you. Seven, I'm not gonna tell you to eat breakfast or not. I'm not gonna say anything about breakfast because I know that some people hate it and can't even think about food in the morning. I know some people love it. Personally, I like it and it's one of the reasons that make me want to go out of bed in the morning. There are different ideas and conceptions about what is a healthy breakfast. And I feel like sometimes it comes in trends. For example, at the moment, I know that on social media, we hear a lot that is very important to get protein in the morning. That's what I hear everywhere at the moment. So now people usually show eggs and even mushrooms, like salty breakfasts. So I remember a few months or years ago, the trend was with uh, raw fruits and yogurt and granola bowls. I know this was very trendy at some point and everyone was saying it's very important to have fruits in the morning etc. So I think that regarding the food 
there are a lot of do's and don'ts that change over time. So what I would advise is just do what you want. I personally prefer everything that is as raw as possible, so not transformed, basically. Even if it's cookies, fine, but I prefer to have cookies that I made the day before. But you can control what's in it. The ingredients, the quantities you put in, etc. For example, I would advise to avoid certain types of cereals, which are uh, highly processed sugars. If it works for you and that's what you like and that's what you want to do, that's fine. But I know that personally, I'd rather have like homemade granola made with uh, oats, maple syrups, nuts, cashews, pumpkin seeds, honey and fruits. That's the type of breakfast that I love and that makes me want to go out of bed. But see what works for you. If you prefer salty stuff, you could have um, eggs, beans on toast. That's the typical thing that I hated before living in the UK. And once I started living there, I absolutely loved it. Um, bread and avocado, whatever works for you. Regarding coffee, I hear a lot at the moment that it's better to avoid coffee in the first hours of the day. Um, personally, I don't drink coffee. I don't really like the taste, except in espresso martinis and tiramitsus. But I wouldn't just drink straight coffee like that. But maybe try. For a week, don't have coffee in the first like two hours of the day for example and see if you feel better if you feel more energized if you feel less stressed and the week after go back to your usual um, coffee right after you wake up and see if anything changes if you notice that your body and your mind feels better one way then just go for it so regarding food i would say do whatever you like do whatever you want However, I do have an advice that is not regarding the food, but it's still related. It is to scrape tongue and brush teeth before breakfast. During the night, our body produces toxins and we can see them in the morning on our tongue. So if we eat and drink straight after waking up without scraping our tongue, without brushing our teeth, then we're just gonna eat back the toxins, basically. Our body wants to get rid of them, but we eat them back, basically. So scraping tongue is an Ayurvedic practice that I started doing maybe four or five months ago and it changed everything like now it makes me a bit like disgusted to eat my breakfast without doing it before and I talked about it with one of my best friends. I didn't know she was doing it as well and I told her that I was doing it and she was like oh yeah I can't not do it now I really noticed a difference on my tongue it really feels cleaner it looks way cleaner and also I don't know if it's in my head or not but I feel like I can taste better the ingredients ingredients in the food that I'm eating. Like food has a better taste. I don't know if it makes sense. Apparently it also has a big impact on breath. It just gives a better and fresh breath. And the one I'm using is in copper. Apparently it's better for like antibacterial stuff. That's what I read online. <laughs> Eight, keep it simple. I wake up, brush my teeth and scrape my tongue, drink some water, make my bed. Sometimes I do the little video of five Tibetan rides, but it literally takes between five and 10 minutes. And that's it. It's literally like a three steps morning routine. Each takes approximately five minutes. So in total, my morning routine is never usually over 20 minutes. I think morning routines with like 12 steps are cool, but I know that if I start that, it's just gonna last like three days. I know I'm going to do it for three days and be super on it and love it. And then after I'm gonna be too lazy and I'll be like, oh, it's too long, it's too complicated. So keep it simple, but keep doing it. A three step morning routine every day is way better than a thousand steps morning routine, but like three days in a month. And you know, at the beginning of each month, you're like, okay, it's a new month, I start again, and then you end up doing three days again. So no, if you do the same thing over and over and expect different results, that's not gonna work. So change your routine, only choose like three specific things that you absolutely wanna do in the morning, very simple things, and stick to it for like longer than at least three weeks, like 21 days. And I assure you that you're going to see some results and some changes. Nine, no shower for me, usually in the morning, except on holidays or when I'm not in the routine or when I wake up late or on the weekends, whatever. But usually I 100% prefer to shower at night. After a long day, usually I do a little like 20 minutes workout or 15 minutes stretches and then I go shower and it's like one of my favorite moments of the day. I think that this feeling of being clean and going into your bed is one of the best feelings ever. I know that for me, when I am in my bed in the morning and I hear my alarm and I know that I have to go shower, it's like an extra hard thing for me, which makes me not want to go
go out of bed. If I know that I will have to leave my bed, so be a bit cold and then go shower, everything is cold in a bathroom and that's not something I want in the morning. Even more in the winter when it's cold and you're just so comfy under your blanket. I don't want to get naked and get cold as I wait in one corner of the shower for the water to warm up. But I know that for some people it's an amazing way to wake up and to get rid of that feeling of having your eyes like half open and all glued together and feel more energized. So if it works for you, again, go for it. It's up to you, in conclusion, as always. 10. The most important thing when you wake up is to ask yourself, what is the thing that I wanna do today? Like, if I only had one hour in my day, what would I do? Set, like, one priority, and if you do that, you're gonna be at least half satisfied with your day. Because I know I tend, for example, to do all the things that are easier to do, but that are not my priority and then the hours go by and in the evening I'm like I didn't do what I wanted to do I just filled my day with other tasks but I didn't do the important thing so even if you have a list of like eight tasks choose the one that is the most important like your priority now that we're done with the tips I'm gonna give you the vocabulary that I used in the video and your task if you want it is to listen to this part of the video at least every night, like once before going to bed in the evening, at least for three days. This way it's spaced repetition and our brain works really well with that. Our memory is way better if we do little sessions of like five minutes rather than one big session of like one hour. In three days, you'll know all these words. Shutters remote. To air your bed. One drop of water. A balanced breakfast, recipes, personal growth content, to shape the rest of your day, requirements properly rather than worth it, thanks to, to get rid of, to taste, fresh breath, stick to it, heat up, whereas, glued, half open, though, straight after waking up. There you go, I'll see you on Instagram every day and next Sunday on YouTube at 5.30. Ciao!